Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. The DRF race of the day for Wednesday, February the 5th, kicks off a 50 cent pick five at Gulfstream Park. Let's throw up the field for race number six. We are going six furlongs, and it's a maiden special weight for four-year-olds and up. You can download free Formulator Pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with us. Eight horses entered in this race. Tepid morning line favorite, the seven propensity. Seven to two on the morning line, trying dirt for the first time. It's that evenly matched a race, Mike. Yeah, I, I thought it was a really tough race. Um, I thought there were a lot of different ways to go in here. And I also thought that the pace was pretty tough to figure out too, Dan. I agree. Time form US hopefully will help us out a little bit. They have propensity on the lead, and propensity has shown speed on synthetic surfaces. It'll be interesting to see if he can transfer that speed to dirt. Dark Web has shown a little bit of speed. Propensity the seven, Dark Web the six has shown a little bit of speed. But maybe one of these first time starters will show speed and it'll change everything. Princely God with an alert break, the number one might be closer to the pace as well. And we'll start our analysis with the one Princely God who is 54 to one. In his career debut last month at Gulfstream, he didn't break very well. He rushed up. They turn into the stretch, and he's in front in the red blinkers. And he's going to understandably tire here, but he ran a pretty good race first out, all things considered. 65 buyer speed figure, now getting Lasix for the first time. I'd send him for the rail if he breaks. Yeah, we're showing the worst part of his race here. He's getting tired down on the rail. But prior to that, as you say, he didn't break great, um, moved up on the outside and just made a four wide run all the way up to the lead. Um, he understandably tired. I guess, considering how well he ran, Dan, I guess he was just maybe a big price in that race because that's the first start ever for this trainer. And so just nobody knew what to expect. This horse actually ran well first time out. And he had some bullet workouts leading up to the race, so it appears he has some ability and maybe some pedigree as well. The second day, I'm a multiple stakes winning dirt router. The two is Parkland Strong, third start of the form cycle here for this Golden Sense gelding. The second dam was a grade three place dirt router, but this horse has already failed on three occasions against maiden claimers. Solid enough figures, but I wonder if he's been exposed. Yeah, that's how I kind of looked at him. He just looks to me like a horse who didn't pan out. They paid a lot of money for him as a two-year-old, and he just hasn't turned out to be that good. The number three is annualized. Interesting pedigree here by Belmont Stakes winner Union Rags out of a half to just a game winner CS Silk. So dirt over turf. A lot of stamina seemingly in this pedigree. Annualized last time out. It was his first start off of a long layoff. He got bet in that race. He showed brief speed and tired. Maybe he'll be part of the pace picture. And I like that he came back with a bullet half mile breeze for Rudy Brissett. We'll see if he can turn it around second off the layoff and second uh, for this trainer because he just didn't do any running at all last time. Um, his debut at Oaklawn last year was good for Brad Cox. Um, he had every chance to win that race, but he went a little green and he couldn't get by in the stretch. And he got a solid figure for that one. But I don't think I can take him off his last race then. He did no running last time. Jimmy Jerkins trains both the four and the five punchline and ghost on a mission. Punchline just really didn't do much last time out. It was his first start off a long layoff. If you want to give that excuse for him, that's fine. The sixth place finisher came back to win at Parks with a 75 buyer. I wonder if this horse may want a little more distance down the road. He's by Into Mischief. His second damn gourmet girl was a multiple grade one winner going long. Yeah, we'll see if he, maybe the blinkers will make a little bit of a difference, too. I don't know. He went greenly in his debut. He got time off after that. He raced greenly again last April. He got time off after that. He came back last time and didn't do that much. Maybe he just can't run, um, but maybe the blinkers will help him. The other Jimmy Jerkins train runner is the firster, the five, Ghost on a Mission by Ghost Zapper, 11% winners with older debut runners. There's speed in this pedigree. Dam was a stakes place dirt sprinter. Second Dam was a multiple stakes winner sprinting on the turf. It appears to me that, the, that this horse's workouts have just gotten better week after week after week. And he has a sprint pedigree compared to some of the others. Yeah, I liked all those things about him too, Dad. I like his works, um, especially I like the fact that Jerkins blew him out a quick three furlongs a couple days ago. Um, you know, Jerkins is okay with first time starters. He's not going to throw out a bunch of horses, you know, that really blow you away and they won't win, win at big prices. Um, but he has his first time starters ready when they can run and this horse might be able to run. 
Six Dark Webs returning off of a long layoff for trainer Ian Wilkes. Let's go back to his second lifetime start way back in 2018. Looks like he has a big chance in this race. Red cap, black silks, he's on the outside, and he's even in the stretch. I wouldn't say this was an explosive stretch run by any means. It was a solid performance, but it also preceded a lengthy layoff. He came back after about 10 months on the bench. He caught a sloppy track at Churchill Downs. He also ran into a horse, Troubling Moon, the third place finisher, that's come back to win three of his next four starts, including two in a row after the third place finish, buyers 77, 82 respectively. I don't think he was embarrassed in that race. I don't think he wanted turf in his yeah. subsequent start, but we're dealing with another layoff. He returns as a first time gelding. Yeah, those are the things that I guess you don't like. Um, just that, you know, a couple of long layoffs for him. I get the excuses for his both of his races last year. I thought his debut was actually good, Dan. He was still green in that race, but I thought he ran well. I wanted him to take a big step forward second time out, and he didn't really seem to do that. Um, but he has run pretty well in both of his starts over faster. Propensity is the number seven. First time Bill Mott, first time Dirt, second start off a very long layoff. So there are angles here. And he really hasn't done much wrong in his career. He has shown speed on the synthetic surface. And in his first start off of that very long layoff, they ran him at Turfway Park. And he ran into B. Jersey's younger brother, who's just gone on fire since getting over here to North America. True, Town B, uh, after winning that race, came back to win with an 86 buyer speed figure against non-winners at two life competition. So maybe propensity was just simply overmatched and he can improve second off the layoff. The dam's a half to a stakes winning dirt sprinter named Western fame. So there's some pedigree here for sprinting and he has that last race to build off of. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, he's run actually okay in all of his races. Not great, but okay. The second career start, he showed a lot more speed um, up at Woodbine. Um, but he was just hanging on his wrong lead all through the stretch, just waiting for somebody to come get him. And Skywire came and got him. You know, we'll see what happens. He has pedigree for dirt. It's also interesting that you mentioned Western fame and some of those horses in the second generation. Mott trained those horses. So he knows he's going to switch his horse right over to dirt. Top seed completes the field. Suge McGahey. This is a Phipps homebred by Orb who connects with 16% of his older debut runners. But you look at this pedigree and you wonder if this is just a starting off point and that distance will be this Colt's friend down the road. He's a half to a stakes place turf miler, a stakes place dirt miler. But the second dam's the big name, Pleasant Home, who won the Breeders' Cup Distaff. Yeah, I mean, that's how I looked at it. Um, this horse has a nice pedigree, obviously, and I'm open, as we'll see in, when the picks go up, I'm open to first time starters in this race, but I thought this horse would want to go longer. Wide open race, race number six at Gulfstream, kicking off a 50 cent pick five. Let's throw up our top selections for this race. I'm going to go with Dark Web, the six. He ran, I thought he ran well fresh uh, last time out uh, on dirt, 10 month layoff. That was a pretty decent race. I'm expecting him to get forward in here like Time Form US does. I think Ian Wilkes will have this horse ready to go for Joe Bravo. You're going with the first or ghost on a mission, the five. And again, in this race, there are a lot of question marks with the horses that have run. Why not take a chance with a firster? That's kind of how I looked at it. I didn't really love the experienced horses, although I, I'll admit I thought long and hard about Princely God. I, that horse deserves another chance in his second start, but I'm going to go with the first time starter here. We both picked Princely God third, five, six, one, eight for Mike, six, five, one, seven for me. Race number six at Gulfstream on Wednesday kicks off the 50 cent pick five with an approximate post of 333 Eastern. Good luck.